Mm -hmm. Welcome in, Mr. Scoop. How are you, first off? I'm going pretty well, thanks, Jamie. How are you? Cracking. Can't wait to get into this. We are going to be going through your team. And firstly, it's just a little complaint. What's happening today? Is this happening for you as well on your computer? But this black screen yes. setup. Yes. Is, is Genius Sports a new hoster? Is that the end of Fan Hub? I don't think so. I think that's always been there. But this black thing is double the size. Okay. And doing some weird stuff. So yeah, that's the first complaint. But secondly, we're going to be going through some questions from the private group. I'm live in the private group right now. And we're going to answer some of them together along with going through your team, where things are at, strategy, all the good stuff that we normally get through, mate. So a 693 awesome. for your squad last week, obviously a little bit probably under where you wanted to be. Yeah, I, I was tossing up whether to play with 12 or 13 and it just ended up that um, in order to play 13, I needed to make some trades that I didn't really want to. Um, yeah. um, one of the guys I was thinking about ended up scoring 57 or 58 in Nathan Brown, but I was like, no, oh. you don't buy Nathan Brown, but uh, you, you win some and you lose some. But yeah, I think just overall, there are a couple of guys who I wasn't as fussed on and I missed one or two big scores. Hughes was great to have though. He propped it up and kept it a competitive score for 12. Definitely. That's for sure. Yeah. The Fifi Hughes captain vice combo was, yeah. was definitely a winner there. And I suppose, yeah, if you had like AFB that came out and did pretty well, that would have helped. And then, yeah, White was 50 solid. average. I said when I bought him, he hasn't oh. hit 50 yet. <laughs> yeah. God. Um, but yeah, good to have Teddy, I suppose there was with his 64 and some that I'm missing out on personally, but heading into round 17, mate, how are you obviously, yeah, no Nathan Brown helps for that week, I suppose, but how are you, how are you sitting for this week? Um, I've got 17, uh, sorry, 18 before making trades this week. I've got Whiten and Fafita on the buy, and then I've got Twiley Boy. Oh, Just, mate. It, it's it's a sad situation. <laughs> I really hope uh, for him personally that he can get through this concussion, but yeah, it's he has to go, I think, and uh, I've got some decisions to make. So probably um, – it's going to be along the lines of what I do in edge because Kai Pierce Paul is benched and he's slowly coming down in money too. Um, we've got Twiles money and Fainu is good, but I don't know if he's really a keeper and he's, Bateman's not super far off as well. So I've got to be looking into the future in that position. So do I go for a Nikara? Do I go for a Katoa? Do I just move Aitken up there and not think about it for a bit? There's a couple of ways I could go about it. Yeah, cool. Uh, that probably kicks us off with our first question from John. Braley to Fainu then. Would that be okay? Ooh, that's a tough one because Fainu's 547K. What's that? That's priced at about 42, 43, something like that. Didn't check it while we're here. No, 39. What am I talking about? Well, that's not too bad, but... He... With Bateman coming back, things are going to shuffle. I think he'll stay there. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he changes. Uh, I think he's okay. I just don't... It's sort of a situation where the appeal was bigger uh, the earlier you got on him. Uh, mind you, I did say that about Jaden Campbell <laughs> the other week, <laughs> and then he went out and bashed out an 80-something and... Uh, prove me wrong. So I think he's okay. I am don't love him as at the moment because he falls into that sort of 500K Wishart type bracket that we were talking about the other week. Then probably not a guy you're going to have to the end of the year and not really a cash town and sort of not a keeper. He doesn't sort of fit yes. super well other than to play maybe somebody in round 19 kind of a thing. Okay. So happy to own, bit weird to buy. I, I still think it's a good... A good purchase. Probably the last week for it though. He'll go, he'll be what, 560, 570. And he'll definitely have some low weeks in him for sure. Like being just a rookie, he looks great now. But we saw a couple of weeks ago, if he didn't have that attacking stat, it would have been like a 30. So yeah, yeah. It'd be a week to week happiness into sadness type of player. But I think he's he's pretty safe. Ramon here says Connor Watson averages 70 at lock. So I'm excited this week and beyond. Are you looking to pick him up? That's a, a good call because I actually, he's definitely a better. 13 than nine for fantasy just because he actually runs a lot more than he would mm. at nine. Um, Ramones had him for a good while and, and held him through the throat injury as well. So yeah, yeah. he's pretty excited, which is good. So um, what do you think on Connor? Is he 
So I was comparing him to Isaiah Yo personally. The thirty k difference. Can they both yeah, score the crazy, same? Hey? Do we have Yo ahead of him? Like, where are you at with that one? Um, it's all right. There's a couple of things to break down here because it's quite interesting. So you've got Connor Watson, absolute gun, uh, at lock, plays hooker two when needed. Like he's just going to be on the park well. He's pushed Radley out to edge now. He he's played well enough to basically say that he's there now. That's good. And he's knocking out gun scores. It's fantastic. However, <laughs> he's 799K for a guy who isn't an established monster keeper, but we have seen those scores from him. Thing is, do you want to pick him up with two buys left to go and especially mm. missing in round 19, which is pretty important, but not a deal breaker. So if you're comparing him to somebody, say, Isaiah Yo, he's definitely missing 19 because of origin yep. then there's no more buys for him but but <laughs> will he get rested for 27 because the panthers love to do that so in all honesty from a buys perspective con watson might even slightly outdo him because he'll be there for round 27 potentially maybe well, but- yeah that's a maybe too right if he's playing massive minutes and they've locked up a top mm-hmm. four spot he probably doesn't play either so yeah but yeah i actually was thinking about on the the way home just before actually just was going back and, and having a look at what even where the ladder was coming into round 27 and the types of guys that got rests as well. Cause I think there's mm-hmm. a big strategy here. If you can, especially around 19, 20, 21, set up your team. Let's just say, you know, yo's the top tier, but then someone's mm-hmm. just under that. That's likely, you know, they might be three or four points worse, but they're going to play all of the games there and they're not going to get rested in one of the games. Like, if you if you're especially if you're lower on trades, if you can go for that strategy, then you might be sweet. And there could be a, a player in another position that's the best that yeah might not be rested, right? Um, so you spend the money on that guy in that position, but then a little bit lower in a 50, 55 tier or something like that. Another that's probably something yeah. that it's a bit of a highbrow strategy and it's a bit of luck and guessing involved, I suppose. But, mm. but that that's you know something that we got caught in. Like we had a lot of those guys that did get rested. Whereas if you had, oh, damn, I should just, you know, I remember like three or four weeks out, I could have picked that guy instead of this guy when they scored about the same, but one was a higher profile player that plays origin or something like that. And we got caught out in that last round. So yeah, that could be an interesting thing to think think about Mm -hmm. for everyone there for sure. What do you reckon for somebody like a guy who is in that slightly cheaper bracket now, but can produce good scores like Murray at 698k? Does that fit into potential resting in that last round or probably not given they want to try and squeak into that top eight given their ladder position see he's yeah he's a different situation isn't he because i think he'll play um if they're yeah. if they're out of contention completely i think he'll still play right because yeah. they he may even rest a bit in that round 20 but then he'll he'll play the rest of it but yeah they well the other scenario as you're saying is there a chance of if they win most of their games like 78 percent of their games they could make the eight right mm. so yeah any team like that that's getting close to the eight will want to better their position or get in, obviously. But if you're eighth, you probably want to be getting six so you get a home final, like in the first one, that kind of thing. Yeah. And we know how close it normally is that there's like one win apart. So yeah, Murray's a really interesting run one, right? And that's probably another thing as well. Team value wise, trades wise, is is all these guys in that six hundred K bracket that might be a fallen gun in the Nicara Murray these types of players, right? And then we've yeah. got even lower tiers with Tungo and and those kind of guys. Is that a is that a bracket you'll be looking in personally? I'll be looking at um Murray for certain okay. in probably round twenty. Yep. Uh if if he doesn't play a million minutes in origin, um, or round twenty one because he plays those last games. Tungo's a funny one because he started really hot and then clearly disappeared and he kind of disappeared. And 441k is a far cry from what we've come to know over the last few years. That's a he's his break even still high. He's priced at 32. Um, if we finally see some stuff in the back end of the year when Cleary finally returns, he could be an absolute screaming pickup. Like if he's going to continue scoring these 20s and 30s, he might still be 400k or 450k, and then really rev up for the run home. Because they've got some really nice teams on that in that back five. They've got Melbourne in that last five, but then that, they've also got Para Raiders, Rabbitohs, and the Titans. So could be really, really fill up type of buy at that time of year. And this might be like a yeah point of difference guy that you have to take just you know to try and and get a leg up on opponents as well. 
Dylan yeah. asks, wanting to trade out Brayley as well and White. Who to bring in? Need a wing fullback for round 19 and a mid or edge for this week. So Brayley and White probably means he's looking in that probably a cheaper guy and a gun or two mid-range type of players. That's probably where like Fainu comes in into it, right? Wing fullback, yeah. you're probably looking at Sharp. What do you think of like Ronnie? That kind of range, the Marzus and stuff. I haven't compared him in fantasy, but I've seen that in Supercoach, the average with and without uh, Trindle for Mulatalo has been utterly insane. Like the difference when Trindle's in the team was a huge bump. And we've seen him drop off a cliff um, in, in this season when it, probably since about the first month of the year. He's just, is he as cheap as Tuggo? I haven't kept tabs on it. 457. So basically the same. Basically yep. the same. Yeah. So I I don't mind it. He's gone on a real dry spell. Two tries in the last, what, nine games or something like that. At his price of 33, he can do way better than that. So he's one of the guys, mid-range types that I wouldn't mind because you know he's going to do better than that. He will be volatile. Maybe not a final 17 type of player. Maybe he's a guy you loop in your sort of run home because he can get the big boom and bust. But yeah, don't mind that. Yeah, and I think to compare with those two guys, for example, one misses 19, one play misses 20, right? So yep. they, it's very hard in both weeks to get a full 13 or full 17 as we're finding out very quickly. Uh, so it probably doesn't matter too much. You just look at maybe the total buys. Like, do they miss mm. two in the next bunch, which that, you know, the bottom four teams does on our list there? And that potential for missing origin games as well, right. uh, your backups as well. We just got that information as well that the Hopgood's likely to be out for the season. His surgeon has come out and said that. So that's very sad to hear. Hopefully he comes back fit and firing next year. And well, we don't really get him too much cheaper, do we? Sadly. But um and then we've got the three Broncos boys are resting. They're not going to New Zealand, which we probably thought. But uh Walsh, Carrigan, and House. I did actually look uh, one of the, the guys that's coming fourth overall has Haas and Carrigan. So that's a, Ow. that hurts. Um, hurts for sure, but they're still in fourth. So they're doing way better than we are. That's for sure. But um, yeah, so that's all that, that news on that front. Paul asks, hi mate, Nakora or Cardi is the big question for me. I haven't really gone through Cardi this week. What do you, what do you think about him now that we've got Hopgood out? That probably mean guarantees uh, 80 minutes out of him, doesn't it? I don't know whether it guarantees 80, but I think what it does guarantee is a big role. So I remember last yes. year when there was a couple of guys out for Origin when like Paulo and RCG were injured or playing Origin and Hopwood was playing uh, that type of stuff. Cardi was playing a couple, uh, some minutes in the middle as well. And if you looked at uh, the things last week, Cardi came on for Offa Hengawi. So I'll be mm. very interested to see how much middle he's actually playing because I think he can really rack up some some solid points per minute there and priced at 42 he's dropped well he's dropped about uh from his peak anyway he got from his starting seven, price and 150 from that price after the 89 so i'm keeping a good eye on him i don't know if i can jump this early but if i really like what i see is very strong potentially can just come in for uh kai pierce paul or um uh twile potentially very shortly yeah, well, since he's come back too, he had that, you know, he played a couple, round six and seven, wasn't the same. Round 11 onwards, so that five games, he's been much better. He's still got some 40s and a 35 in there, but a 57 and obviously a 62 in that time. But as you said, in the middle, he's obviously going to get his hands on the ball plenty. Round 189 six meters. Six offloads. Six offloads. It's absolutely wild. So if that's, well, they also need something to happen as well, right? They're last yeah. and... Yeah, how they're gonna how they're gonna get there? Like oh, Hopgood was an offloading type of player as well, so maybe he can cover that. He'll definitely have to play some thirteen, right? Unless you know, they mm. use Maddo for bigger minutes through that one as well. So maybe Maddo's one to to touch on, but he's a bit of a scarier prospect, isn't he? Yeah, I couldn't believe that he wasn't he still wasn't lock even yeah, the other week mentioned. when they were playing the Roosters. It's just like it's never Madison season. <laughs> <laughs> Jack in the comments says, "Tell me it's not Maddo season. It's not Maddo season." <laughs> Uh, oh god oh god um yeah so your plan potential plans for you this week mate just to go back to your squad i think it is very strongly leading towards somebody like a, a nicker or a cardi 
for this Twalies. week or next. I I find it hard to jump straight away on Cardi, but there are good signs there. I want to know what Tulagi is going to do because if Tulagi plays some middle and Cardi just sticks on the edge, might not be as good for him. Still be a pretty good purchase, not, not quite as good otherwise, potentially. Maybe he scores 47, 48 um, from his 42 price instead of a 50. I don't know. Definitely. Uh, how many trades left, mate? I'll actually just pop your team up. And team I have Eliza. four heading into this week. Okay. Scooper. So four. Wow. I can't believe I have, um, you've overtaken me, hey? You're always just yeah. extra trades, man, always, um, which is crazy. BS3 yeah. last week. To my yeah, did zero. The hands, did know. the hands in the white and trade. Oh, hands early. Okay. There you go. So Cole are out, Braley out, Kelmont. Yeah. Easy three trade outs, which is cool. So did you go Marshall King in the end? Just price wise? Was that the main yeah, reason? Yeah, I couldn't. It, that was the thing. I needed f- like four more extra K to get Marnie. And it was either hands or Just go down to Nathan Brown, Brown or. Uh, Alex Johnston or something, and I was like, it just seems so much worse than Hands. So I went with the Marshall King and Hands because Hands Hands can cover half as well if I need him to. Although I don't think I'll need him to, but so we'll can see wise. how it ends up going. <laughs> there you go. Um, what's he gonna say? Hands, I suppose you've got Arthur come onto the bench now too. That's pretty rough. Mm. Um, I wasn't gonna say. Oh, Appy, Appy was the play. <laughs> I love yeah. how we we would have had no idea either because he hasn't been scoring good at all and just goes bang. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, he was amazing to start the year, dropped off, and then all of a sudden he's back. So to see how it it goes. Yeah. So maybe one trade for you then down to three. Yeah, I'd say it'll be. Ah. Oh. It's hard to know because Pierce Paul, if he's going to stay on the bench, is a definite trade out. And Twilight think he's going to come back at some point, but he's also not the top guy I want to play and he's not scoring points. So it'll be mm. one of those two likely to to that edge of Nico or Cardi or or Katoa or something like that. But uh, yeah, that's fair. Th- you've only got two outs, so you've got three outs, so you can do that easily, can't you? Yeah. If Grant plays, which he should. Yeah, cool. All right. Uh, Darren asks what to do with Twal. We're selling, right? Yeah, we've got to sell. Like He was out for a month last time with concussion, and then he's done it again. And given that he's already been out three weeks, he could be back next week, or he could be out another three weeks. We don't know. Yeah. That's yeah, we've... that's the nature of the beast with head knocks. Yeah, it's so tough. He can't work it out. Uh, Simon asks, he, he says he has Brayley, but he only has two trades. Trade or not, it's tough, mm. isn't it? If he's around 19 hooker, I think maybe hold. Probably I think you have to hold thought. until then. If you've got somebody else, it's hard to know. Because how much has he dropped with those two bad games now? Because I, I got rid of him. Five for Rayleigh. 55 or 540? Yeah. 543. Okay. So if you can straight swap to like a Fainu and you don't need a hooker, possibly, but two trades is pretty low. You want some for, for 19, surely. Yeah, because I like I've I still have him. I'm looking to like with um Fuller like you know Fuller's playing this week, which is good, but still waiting on like Cotter and stuff. I could just do one trade and probably go Braley to someone, but um like I could go Braley to Sharp or something like that, and and that could be fine. But I got six trades, whereas if you had two, I think yeah, it's hard to hard to justify it for sure. Kate says, "Evening, gents. Is SJ a trade? I've been holding out, but think it could be time. Yeah, sadly he is, and he's still at an okay price, right? To to move on, it's not." Diabolical, like it is in um, six fifty eight is pretty good compared to four ninety. He's got down to in yeah. super coach. <laughs> uh it's been it's the highest of highs and lowest lows of super coach. But yeah, I um, oh yeah, he's, he's killing even it. in even in this. How much has he lost? He's lost about one hundred and fifty k in two weeks, and he's out for a month. That's just to that's just to sell. Oh, like Jesus. that's a sell, no matter how you look at it. Unfortunately, he got to eight ninety seven. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. So 897, 87, 32. So in the three weeks that he's played, he's gone from 887, 887 to 562. Oh, my. That's 230. crazy. Oh, this, yeah, seven, 658. Sorry. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, all right. Rahul, how'd you have me rate the mic? Yeah, that's all you can see is mic in my face. Uh, can you discuss the DMs I sent? All right, cool. I'll, I'll try. Actually, I won't be able to get that up. 
That's easy. All good. We'll get. I'll get to that. Uh, Rahul later. Uh, what do we got? Awesome having Scoop on the live vid. Love his commentary. Always great content. There you go. Bit of love for you, Scoop. That's from Kurt. Uh, thoughts on Jordan Noah getting more games off the bench? Jordan Noah, who's he with? Jordan Noah. There's a Jordan, different Jordan. Jordan, who's his W? Is it, uh, the Raider? Jordan Day. No, oh, Jordan Mar. Um, is that the he's talking about? Maybe. Don't know. Oh, Jordan Miller? No, I don't know. Yeah, is that the one, Jordan Miller? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, because he's not named this week, is he? Yeah. Carl says, who would you play first out of Cole, Sharp, Hands, and Wishart? Who would you play first? Wishart would be the best, you'd say, against Raiders. Yep. Sharp against Cole, Eels Sharp, Hands? Or Sharp and hand, Sharp and Cole would be close, you'd imagine. Yeah. Oh, but it's the depleted Cowboys too. So, yeah, maybe Cole second, Sharp narrowly third. Cole's playing but great. Yeah, those I mean, two are close. I'd say Bouchard first, those two second, roughly equalish. Yeah, for sure. Uh, mate, just some general strategy on your end. What have you got any sort of plans going forward? Are you how are you looking towards round 19? How are you looking next week with uh adding in Jerry Marshall King now, Plath, Aiken? Yeah, I've tried to trade so that I can make as few trades as possible. And basically just trading for needs and injury now. So Kai Pierce, Paul, and Twile are the ones that are going to probably be on my bucket list to get out. And then it leaves me a couple to bring in guys for round 19 so I can possibly just sit in round 19 and not have to do any trades at all. Yep. And um, yeah, at this stage, I think three Dolphins isn't going to hurt too much in round 18. Uh, I'll have, I won't have Origin guys not backing up or anything like that. So I think I can cover that with some nice loops. And yeah, so four trades seems pretty low. Oh, it is It is low. It's just <laughs> been that sort of a year. But I'm relatively happy to just make sort of one a week and just sit there until about round 20 now. Yeah, And then I'll have about 10 for the run home. Yeah, that's, I'm personally glad I've got the six because I have um, four Dolphins plus Campbell next week. So... Um, yeah, I think if I, if I can get away with only using one this week or even zero, if I decide to hold Braley, then it gives yeah that little bit of leeway to make trades. So at least you're in that position where you don't have to next week, unless injuries pop up, which is yep. awesome. So you've planned that out at least, which is good. Uh, he says have 17 pending Preston and Haas. So Haas is out sadly Heath. Uh, so 16, hopefully with Preston. I imagine you'll come onto the bench, right? Is that what you reckon? Yeah, well, was he was he in the reserves last week too? No, first week back. Okay, so um, that means he's got Fafida, Campbell, Garrick, and Latrell on bench. Do I just hold trades? Five left. Yeah, they're four guns, eh? Unless you want to move on Haas, maybe, but with five trades. Yeah, yeah. Because he's gonna. Miss. They've been pretty heavy with resting the Broncos this year, so he could miss twenty as well potentially. Seventeen, nineteen, maybe. 20 or less minutes, and then they're 26, whatever they are. So out of that list, he's probably the only one. Or you could maybe go Campbell, given he's going to miss two in a row. If you wanted to get the full 17, that's probably, yeah, yeah it's like Campbell or Haas, really. Garrick's back yep, next I'm week, sure Fafita back next week, Latrell back next week, and he's a top-tier keeper. So, yeah, interesting. Uh, Kyle says, do you think McInnes, Max King, and Sam Walker are season-long keepers? What do you think? Oh, I've sort of not been looking at McInnes too much, but now he's dropped out of the New South Wales team. He could be very useful for that round 19. How's he, how's he get tracking along? He's under 700 now. He had a couple of lower minute ones post-origin, which mm. is good. So he went a little bit down, 47 in 54 minutes, and then 41 minutes for 29 in that yeah. 30 that to 28 concerning. game. Uh, a little bit concerning. They do play some pretty easy yeah. opposition. Well, very easy opposition for the run home, to be honest. Like when you've got Dogs, Titans, Tigers, Cowboys, Rabbitohs, Gold Coast, Newcastle, Dragons, Warriors, Manly for the rest of the year, that like you cannot get better than that. So doesn't exactly lend itself to tackle bot games, but he'll do he'll do what he'll do. Um yeah, like, so I don't I... think it's a I don't think it's an urgent trade out or anything if he does start to get those lower minutes consistently, like if he is only getting like 52, 53 minutes a game instead of like 
high 50s, then you can think about it. But until then, not super high priority trade out, is he? See, I, every every week almost it changes. It could be like screaming by and then it could be like, oh, just hold. And then it could be like, yeah. holy shit, get off. Like <laughs> he's, yeah, like a 683, he could be getting closer to a buy if he got back to these like mid 60s minutes, a random 80 minute yeah. game there. Uh, but it could just be 40 and 50 minutes against these, you know, lesser teams for sure. And they've got like Rudolph back and and all these types of players. So yeah, very, very interesting one. That is Hawira. Evening lads. I've been sitting between five and six K overall most of the season. How do I gain ranks or what's the best way to gain ranks? There you go. It's a really cool, cool question there. Um, far away. And I'll, I'll give my thoughts after. It's hard to make a good uh, call on that without seeing the team, but really it's just being efficient. Like planning is all good and well, and all these complicated strategies can work out to really pick you up the ranks very heavily, but they can also go wrong the most often. So I've set my team up with a couple of trades the last few weeks, but now I'm pretty much just sitting how I'm going. And I'm really hoping that being able to use those last couple of trades I've got efficiently and not needing to run out and trade and upgrade this player is going to hold me in good stead by slowly getting me up the ranks and giving me the weapons to make more ranks later by holding those couple of trades. So it's sort of a two a twofold step. If you try and make it all at once and it goes wrong, then you've got no backup plan, do you? So mm. I think efficiency is key, planning so that you need to do as little as possible. Cool. I like that. I've got two-prong attack for this one. You've got what we've been doing here and trying to get the full amount of players on the park in each of the important, well, each of these weeks, basically, in this whole buy period. It seems to be if you do that and you're not buying like you know, Roger on return, right? And he goes low or, you know, these types of guys that could be very hit and miss. Um, if you're avoiding those types of plays, going for the guys we're kind of talking about that have a little bit of upside or, you know, even like guys like Fletcher Sharp a couple of weeks ago, like he had, he was risky in some way, but he had upside, right? He has try scoring upside. Wish Art, you knew that he was going to score pretty well. Um, you know, having KO weeks, having Galvin, all these types of guys that can do well. It's making sure you have those types of guys and, and filling your teams in those weeks. Or from here on, based on the trades, if you're in a decent position trades-wise, get close to that 13 and 17 on the park for those weeks. Start gaining some you know, origin, the good origin players, the top tier guys. Go for a Nico Hines this week. These types of plays could could really propel you. Or you're like you're waiting until that last six rounds to kind of pounce on the guys that have all used they've used all their trades and they've made their ranks early, but you're going to swamp them over the top in the in the back end of the season is probably the couple of ideas. And, and that's probably where I want to go be pretty close and pretty decent over the next bunch of weeks, make a little bit, but then really make, um, you know, in that last bunch of rounds when people are out yeah. of trades, I might have three or four extra on, on some. That's probably, yeah, my way of trying to have my cake and eat it too and, and, and win in both ways. So yeah, great question. Thanks yep. for that. We were there. Uh, round 20, we get the extra trades, Kyle. All righty. Nikki with Carrigan not playing, think I'll trade him to Hines as my one trade this week. Yeah, I think that probably works really well, to be fair. That's good. Carrigan yeah. with, the, with the rare stings that they've had for Haas and Carrigan, if he misses this week, 19, 20, and 24, that's really rough for a guy that's a, a expensive player in your team. So I think that works pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot. And that and that's yeah, what we said about Haas. It goes for goes for Carrigan as well, because they're scoring very similarly this year and both playing absolutely incredible. So that is all the questions for the the live guys. That was awesome. We'll let them keep listening in so they get the video before uh before everyone else does, which is cool. <laughs> um yeah, any other thoughts sort of back end of the season, mate? Do you have any of the maybe the origin guys or anyone you are looking to clearly target in a certain position maybe you're lacking or you want to yeah, just certain guys you want. I think with the rearrangement that the Rabbitohs have gone through and their improvements, I just think you have to get Luttrell in as, as soon as possible. Like round 20, you just get him in. Maybe if you've got a lot of trades, maybe you can even get him in now and then do a couple of others so you can play 13 in round 19. Like he is kicking... 200, 300 meters a game on top of what he's doing. That's like a, what Pong was doing last year, plus a little bit. He, his floor is now so humongous that 
it's hard to pass yeah. him up. Like Incredible. he's expensive, but he could average 60, 65 for the rest of the year. Yeah, he could be the ponger of last year, couldn't he? Just yep. crush it. But well, Pong was kicking a fair bit actually as well. Um, hmm. Goal kicking, yeah, all of it at once. I think he's definitely priority level. Um, 58 is where he's priced at, but if you're looking at the scorers in that position, right, it's it's him and it's him and Edwards, and then basically um Yeah, Tedesco scoring at the and moment then, in, in that level. And then you've potentially got well, when Cleary comes back in round 20, does it go back down? Edwards has been amazing all year. Yeah. But it's been without Cleary. So we'll see how that ends up going. So we've probably got three guys 55 plus at the moment. Edwards, Latrell, uh, Teddy. And then we could have Ponga come back and, and play like that for sure. So you have a few yep. of the guys, Manu, Drinkwater in the 50 range. Centers, we've got obviously Aker up at the 56 range and then a bunch of guys around the 50. So center's still a really solid position. But if you're looking at players in your side, whether it's Penasini, whether it's Iro, Karaz is at 48, Garrick's at 44, but yeah, it should be more. He's had two head knock games. Um, yep. We have a bunch of those guys at like reasonable prices that we could get almost the right amount as the you know top guys, I suppose. Whereas wing fullbacks, it's a bit different, right? Yeah, I think I think Garrick's a really good buy in a week or two after he comes back. Round as 19, you said, probably. He's, yeah. He's, 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 yeah, he's had those games where it's just been played three minutes, scored zero points, played 20 minutes, scored five points. You take those out instead of averaging 43.8. He's averaging 51 and he's going to wow. lose more money with a break even of 72 quite possibly. Um, so like just him and Luttrell seem like really the guys to target over the next month in uh, in the wing fullback position and maybe center. Perfect. Uh, the halves is an interesting one. Obviously there's a, feels like a clear top three for me with, with Nico, Cleary and Hughes, probably the, the way to go. And then, Maybe a DC could be a cheeky one on the back end. We're all going to hold Galvin most likely mm. as well. Yep. Moses, maybe. Um, yeah. He's an interesting one and he'll be reasonably priced under 700K as well. Um, break even 54. So that'll be solid. So yeah, it'll probably just depend on how much uh, cash yep. you've got available to splash. Edge, it's, yeah, Aiken's still there. Obviously, Hopgood's done now. It's going to be Olakawatsu, Kolomatangi, Crichton, for feeder, really, if we're putting Aiken in yeah. the centers, the rest is sort of yeah around that fifty mark. So for feeder, you know, you're getting that extra ten to fifteen points out of. So he's pretty important, right? Yeah. Um, the other guys, if you have got a mixture of one at least, yeah, you know, maybe for feeder and one of the other guys, I think you'd be sweet. And then have a backup being whoever it is for me it might be Blorf, Pikura, whatever you can get away with, something like that probably. So yeah. For feeder is going to be pretty important for the mids. you got to obviously a lot of guys here above the 50 mark, but there's still a couple of, you know, three or four guys there up top that are really dominant. Watson, Carrigan, Isaiah Yo and Payne Haas, Adam Fanul Blake sort of up there. He's I'm probably putting him in the Joe Tarpany realm. Just that little bit cheaper, yeah. but could definitely do a job. Murray you've got in that realm as well. Right. So yes. Mixture of all those couple cheaper, maybe one, one top tier, I think it's going to be end up being for my side, I reckon. Do you think the same? Yeah, I, I reckon so. I'll probably be looking to grab. Yeah, it's tough because you know Haas has the guaranteed buy and then Yo probably misses 27. So which one do you value more? Yeah, yeah that's right. I'm probably just going to have to cop one of them. Actually, a little interesting exercise then before we go. Which one of these guys do we think is going to play the rest of the season in this top 12 or something? and not get rested. I like reckon top. Murray's Murray's up there. Um, Harris, probably if he's not injured, he'll keep playing. Cotter, imagine if they're in like a fifth or sixth spot, he might get rested. Stefano probably plays the whole way. AFB yeah. probably plays the whole way. Um, yeah. Although he misses 27, which is a bummer. Oh, yep. Yep. There you go. Same thing. So him and Harris are out on that front. McInnes, mm, he's a maybe, I reckon. I think he'll get small rests throughout. I don't think he'll be rested in the last week because they've got so many soft opponents oh, true. True. that if they belt him, 40 he'll minutes get 10 minutes rest. Yeah, might 100%. do that three or four times. I like that. Um, Terrell May probably plays through. Nat Butcher, probably the same. Um, Tarpanair, 
he'll keep playing through as well. So Tapani needs a, a cheeky one after he gets through that round 19 buy. So plenty to look yeah. at. And that's something I think everyone can simply and easily go through for each position and, and look at a guy and go, what are the chances of him being rested 10%, 20%? Or up to like 80, 90, 100 with, um, with some of the other guys. So that's a cool one. And then Hooker to finish things off, mate, for the video. We've got, well, Cook is really the the informed mm. man at the moment. Uh, Reed's still up there, obviously. And then Robson mm. post by, but then Grant's kind of the the cheap guy on the, um that has the ability to bounce Grant, back. The cheap maybe. guy. How crazy is that? Well, he is compared to them. What is he, six or seventh in line now? Six, 650 six. something. Yeah. yeah. Cook, like Robson, that. Reed, yeah. Marshall King. Is Little ahead of him in price? Yep. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's that's amazing, hey. Wow. Would you buy, would you go out and buy Cook, though, given he's signed um, with the Dragons and they might give Marmazola's time? Do you reckon there's a chance of that? We were saying that recently, and then he, well, he got 72 minutes on the weekend, but that was, yeah, mm-hmm. that was, game was almost done then. Yeah. Um, they are moving him around. Like Pete's coming on and playing still. So I don't know if Pete, like they're going to give him sort of 30 or 40 minutes or 50 minutes and, and maybe that eats in a little bit. It's definitely a risk, right? But he is scoring the best. He just keeps getting attacking stats. He can't get away from it at the moment. Yeah, well, the Rabbits did nothing and all of a sudden they're exploding up the ladder. Could be, back- instead, it could yeah. be the literal opposite of last season where they went from first yeah. to not making it to last to making it. That'd be, cr- that'd be the funniest thing ever. That's right. And his meters gained a way up. So remember, like last year, there's a lot of times there he's under 50 yeah, meters. 19, and stuff. 15. Yeah. And then back to sort of some of his best here, like when he was running good meters, he gets 70s, 100. 80s, 70s, 50s, 60s. So he's back to that little realm. Yep. Um, so can he keep that up? That's the question. Because he was a bit low at the start of the year. And that's why the scores are very all over the shop. So yeah, he's a fun one for sure. And he's not too expensive as yet, like for what he's scoring right now. But in the next few weeks, he's, he's, if he keeps it up, he'll be over 800K and then it's probably a little bit tough. But yeah, yep. if you're in the market for a hooker, for sure. Interesting one. And like I'm a grant owner. I think he's just a, a clear hold, obviously. I don't know if you're looking to buy him. Like he didn't even look that great last night either. I think he was 12 in 40 minutes as well, fantasy-wise. So mm. there you go. All right. Uh, your final thoughts on Origin last night, mate? You got a one minute 20. That was one of the most clinical first halves of anything ever I've seen. Um, and Queensland need to actually think about not just rocking up and picking the team that they know can can beat them because we were all hyped up for, oh, yeah, Slater picks a team that's not going to make errors and that can work together. Didn't work out last night, did it? So they've got to think about what strategy they want to do. And New South Wales just needs to take that first half and copy-paste it twice, and they've won. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um... Ah, oh, they were off, weren't they? They were very much off, and they, you know, kick out in the full off a restart. Like I don't think I've ever seen that happen to Queensland. I've seen us do it, but <laughs> um, yeah, it'll be a different game. I'm hoping for a close one. We've had two blowouts, so hopefully it's a yeah a nice close. Yeah, one. I think I think it'll be a good more final one. My my solace for this year for Queensland losing that one and the Eels on the bottom is that Lo- Moses to Lomax next year. Oh, it's going to be amazing that's true i forgot that he's gone over there so yeah he played so well and and moses is great too so yeah can't wait for that and thank you everyone for tuning in that was good fun and i hope you guys like